Oxytocin is a very underrated peptide. It just has so many cross benefits for cardiovascular protection, HPA access suppression, so that modulates your central nervous system, so it can improve heart rate variability, you know, lowering cortisol, it's got anti-inflammatory properties, and even pro-social as well. And I first started using it back in 2023, but I've only recently got back into it. So I'm gonna share my findings and what I've seen with it, improving my heart rate variability, lowering resting heart rate, de-stressing. But first of all, let's go over some of its health benefits. So the peptide oxytocin has been around for some time. It's FDA approved to help induce labor, and it's got some off-label uses, even for autism, like children with autism very interesting stuff but uh, in animal models looking at it it does have some cardio protection effects you know reducing that uh, cardio inflammation apoptosis cell death fibrosis even that obviously happens over time leading to heart failure there's also been multiple trials on both animals and humans showing that it blunts hpa access activation and so that can as i mentioned before can lower cortisol and just put less of a drain on the cardiovascular system there's even been a human trial with intranasal use of it and then that was shown to again like show you know the parasympathetic nervous system activate that rather than the sympathetic nervous system and some people are naturally just lean more towards being more sympathetic nervous dominant there's another name for it as being hyper vigilant so just very easily stressed and if they do if there is situation that does uh, raise cortisol it can take them a long time for that to uh, to kind of downregulate again. And so it can really help in this scenario. In rodent models, it's been shown to lower inflammation, in particular, the inflammatory cytokines being released from adipose tissue. I mean, it can help with reducing visceral fat and uh, lipolysis as well, you know, turning fat cells into energy. And then uh, in aged mice, it's even been shown to reduce liver fibrosis, which has been a problem for me, my liver age being older. There's been some large trials on it in the case of autism, and there's been some reports that can help with improving eye contact, just pro-social, um, but bonding, like connection between people. But yeah, moving on to why I've started using it again, I did cover uh, beta blockers recently, and I'm trying to get my resting heart rate down, improve heart rate variability, and blood pressure as well, which has creeped up a bit, my uh, dice, or, sorry, my systolic blood pressure. But the issue with beta blockers is they can limit maximum heart rate and then that can lower your VO2 max, as well as some of them can affect uh, you know, your vasodilation. And so, uh, yeah, and I'm starting to see that now. I increase my dose of propanolol, a beta blocker, and I'm actually starting to see my cardio actually drop off a bit. And so there's a bit, it is a double-edged sword. So I'm experimenting coming off my uh, propanolol and just using the oxytocin instead. And so far, I'm actually seeing good response from it. I mean, I, I've been meaning to use it for a while because I've been getting a lot of good reports from people who do use oxytocin. And I don't know why I took so long to start using it again. Like I said, I used it back in 2023, doing a few injections of it, and then I tried doing it intranasally. And then I think I mixed up wrong because um, I ended up losing the, the rest of it. But yeah, I, I remember noticing it more with the injections because I mixed it up wrong. And then, but now I'm really, I am noticing an effect from doing uh, sub-Q injections of oxytocin. I get like that kind of warm flushing feeling initially. And then after that, I get like a, a calm feeling, just like, um, like a relaxed muscle feeling, like, you know, reduced inflammation, less pain. I train really hard in the gym Monday to Friday in the mornings. And then I'm sat there at my desk most of the day, sometimes leaning forward, that can be bad for my back. And uh, so by the evening, I wanna relax. And yeah, I find it, it gives me like that afterglow feeling that you get with uh, low dose cannabis. I might do that on the weekends to relax it, like early on in the day. And then when it wears off or mostly it's worn off, I have that similar kind of feeling. And it makes sense because you've got uh, endocannabinoids like uh, anandamide and that actually enhances oxytocin release in the hypothalamus. So, and I, I've actually bucked the trend with cannabis compared to the WHOOP community where on average people get a 3% minus recovery score. For me, it's plus 3%. It has been higher, like five, even six, but it depends on the time of day and dose. And because I keep it at a threshold dose, that's what makes me beat those trends. But then with cannabis, there are some downsides, especially with long-term heavy use, you know, like dopamine, down-regulation, even memory issues. 
But that's why I'm getting very into this oxytocin. Some people even report with it that they have enhanced libido with oxytocin. I haven't personally noticed that, but it works through the limbic system, inhibiting the amygdala. So uh, yeah, that can uh, yeah just re de regulate stress. And uh, yeah, I do notice that. And I guess indirectly cortisol can lower libido, especially in some people, myself included, like genetically. So yeah, I mean, I'll see over time, but the main reason why I'm using it, as I mentioned, say like blood pressure, after that initial flush, you do get a vasodilation effect, you know, like nitric oxide release. And so, yeah, I'm keeping a close eye on my blood pressure because I think the evening time is somewhere that can be when I'm vulnerable because often I eat a big meal, breakfast, lunch is fairly light and then dinner is heavy again just because of time. And then I've noticed my systolic blood pressure can creep up after dinner because my kidneys are having to work hard to break down protein as well as obviously sodium as well clearing that and so yeah i'm going to keep an eye on it just over time because obviously uh, oxytocin it does have a short half-life in the blood anyway and then is you know making changes that that's more long-term epigenetic changes but of course in the immediate those effects on the amygdala as well as hypothalamus those neural circuits that's uh you know that it's going to well outlast the those that five to ten minute half-life in uh, plasma and then uh, you know over time uh, there's you know studies suggesting that there's actual neuroplasticity changes you know stress buffering effects even after doing a cycle of oxytocin that it can have a lasting effect check out our 12 month rejuvenation program where every three months we look at 225 different biomarkers and get your future vitality optimized there's even a six month break clause if your situation was to change so over the cycle, I'm going to be keeping a watch on various different things. I mentioned blood pressure, heart rate variability. In that uh, intranasal study, that's what they noted was an improvement in HRV. So I'm going to be monitoring that with my WHOOP, as well as, uh, you know, like dropping my um, propanolol. So I'm going to see, in theory, I should see my um, maximum output, my heart output going up by dropping that but I've got the oxytocin balancing out the you know, resting heart rate. So I won't see my heart rate, my resting heart rate go up from dropping propanolol, but I might see my actual maximum output go up. So my caloric output on the cross trainer, that'd be very interesting to see because for sure, when I compare my maximum heartbeat to, I don't know, say 18 months ago, the difference is profound. And I wondered if it was just my device you know, there was a maybe because it's very old, my whoop, but I've switched to the five and I'm still seeing that. I should see cortisol coming down. I measure it epigenetically every three months. It's not a transient reading as with you find with a blood test. So that should show a long-term trend. Obviously during the daytime, I do run on a certain level of cortisol because I'm just so busy with work, jumping from different tasks, it's just ongoing. But in the evening, that switch, and maybe there's a little bit of a lasting effect in the morning from the oxytocin. And then other markers, you know, you've got like an adrenal stress marker, so catecholamines, breaking them down because then that's another factor as well. So yeah, the evening time. And then like, say with dinner as well, I mentioned that, uh, you know, in mice experiments, it actually improves glucose tolerance. So if I'm timing it with dinner, then I measure my glucose with a continuous glucose monitor. So it may help with that. So far, it's just early days. I've only been on it for just shy of a week. I possibly could see my liver age coming down, that reduced fibrosis damage from over the years. So we'll see on that one. And IL-6, you know, that inflammatory cytokine, I'm not expecting much, well, from the oxytocin because, you know, the uh, visceral fat, I've got, just got like the bare minimum. I can't really get much lower with visceral fat. Jumping over to my dosing protocol, I've been doing 150 micrograms of it. So I've got actually got a 10 milligram vial, which is actually, you could argue is too much if you're doing it subcutaneous like me. I mean, I'm doing that is quite a high dose. Normally people don't go above 80 micrograms, something like that. So for me, using the two mil of water, that means I'm only doing three units of it each time. So I get around 66 shots out of it. So that would take me, if I'm doing it almost every day of the week, pretty much, then that would take me to around two and a half months of use. If I was to do it again intranasally, I'd have to dilute it maybe four times as much. So eight mil of water and then that because each spray is around 12 units or like 0.12 ml 
and the bioavailability drops from you know being near 100% with subcutaneous to well 50% tops probably in that region between that and 10% intranasally but then again to reiterate my dose is much outside the studies at 150 micrograms so that is a big dose and that's because i've been getting it from peptides of london they provide a 10 milligram vial so in this instance maybe it's a bit too much 10 milligrams if you're going to do it over up to a 10 week period uh, i have like i say in the past i did get it from swiss chems and they do both a two milligram and a five milligram vial um it's a shame that I didn't really give it a proper go last time. I got it, uh, didn't get the measurements right with doing it intranasally, and then I actually lost it. And But I do remember it actually having an effect both uh, the sub-Q, definitely, and then intranasally it did, but yeah, I just didn't get enough data with it. Peptides of London in general have really high-grade peptides, recent testing, no mannitol added to it. And same with uh, Swiss chems. They do have some mannitol when I tested the epitalon, but it's still a reasonable dose of it. And yeah, so there, and again, the prices are really good there as well. So if you do have any feedback using oxytocin, it is quite a popular peptide, very low in the way of side effects. I mean, the main one is hypotension. So that can be a good thing. You know, if you do suffer if your blood pressure is a little bit higher than where it's meant to be, optimal range is around 115 to 105 for uh, systolic and then 65 to 75 for diastolic and obviously uh, resting heart rate is a very important metric as well i'm trying to keep mine 45 and below and yeah like i say it does there, there seems to be lots of cross benefits not just for your heart but just across your body inflammation it's just very interesting to see people's feedback from it so if you like that video then check out this one on methylene blue it can bypass breaks in the mitochondrial complex electron transport chain so just optimizing mitochondrial function just has so many gene expression benefits thanks for watching see you next time